Welcome to Before the Bat, the Gotham Podcast, your guide to the TV show Gotham and all things Batman. I am Phil, and Kelly couldn't join us today. She's busy being in love and all that stuff, but Tyler's here. Yeah, I mean, you get me. The Robin to Phil's Batman. Uh-huh. Good. Sidekick. So, let's get into Gotham this week. Yeah, let's, uh, the episode Unleashed. Like I've said multiple times on this podcast, I like season two. Uh, there's a few parts I was like, huh, but overall, this season will be very interesting to go back and rewatch completely. Oh, yeah. Because like, yeah. like we said, they had a full vision and plan for this season. That's why last season we got like, what, four episodes or three episodes of The Ogre? Yeah. Because like, we, need, we need to stretch this out. Yeah, you could you could tell there's a lot of different pieces this season one. This season's a lot more cohesive. Yeah. Um, so we got, you know, part two of the Azrael arc. And it's been interesting how they've done villains like that. Uh-huh. Where they'll get like a two episode arc. Like the the elect- electrocutioner was two episodes, I think. Yeah. Wasn't the scarecrow kind of two episodes? Well, technically, I mean the I mean Theo got the first half of the season and then two Two episodes is Azrael. Right. Right. I mean, so, I mean, we got two episodes that were really Mr. Freeze oriented. Uh huh. Because, like, you got to think this season is like the first half, Theo is the main villain. Second half, Strange. Yes. But I like this episode when we have uh, Selena breaking in and finds Nigma. In the air yeah. And she and she tells him how to get out, and he pops out on the roof, and he's all like celebrating. And I was like, "Told you, he's not free yet." And then he gets caught. <laughs> yeah, it's, he's just like, "Why would you want to go in there? Trust me, I've seen things. You don't want to go in there." And did you do you see good old uh, Oswald Penguin? His body still, her body is still there at the dinner table. I know, it's just like, okay, how crazy is he now? Because, I mean, if nothing else, wouldn't that body stink by now? <laughs> yeah, it makes me, was it this episode or last one, Gordon had a line about uh, people coming in and then monsters coming out or something about to Strange, yeah. because, you know, how's Penguin going to be now? You know, Barbara wasn't even in this episode. Uh-uh. She, she was mentioned off camera from Butch. Uh-huh. Um, Wait, she was she wasn't. I was gonna. I thought maybe we had two seconds, but maybe that was last episode. No? Yeah, because last episode we just saw her like flipping through the TV and being all kind of crazy. And Butch is like, uh, and that's when he just mentions that he kicked her out. Yeah, and I'm like, okay, so is something gonna happen. Barbara's gonna snap, and uh, I do feel bad we haven't had any more dialogue or anything else with Doctor Tompkins. There's been nothing from Jim really to reach out for her yeah, and talk to her. Because there's like, I think there's two episodes left. Do you think we're going to get her before the end of the season? I have no idea because did you? we'll get there when we get there. But but I just wonder if when they film this, if she was still pregnant or if she just had the baby or something. If they're just going to like wait for the season. Yeah, I mean, that would be fine. I mean, we need some dialogue though. Something about him like... I really need to catch up with, with Lee. Uh, or you've reached Dr. Compkins, leave me a message, and then he's just hangs up. Something where you can tell that thread's still alive in his mind. Yeah. Because it, do, it does feel so awkward of just what has occurred. It, um, it, just, it just seems weird. Maybe they're just trying to, like, you know, string us along. But it's like, could they basically just have him ne- never go look for her and they just, like, drop her from the show? It's possible. I mean, it's it's highly possible. I mean, it, did, I wonder if she really lose the baby, or she just tell him that exactly. And she, uh, and, she and she's just done with him because she's hurt so bad. I just what wonder, he did. I just wonder if it's contract negotiations time, or she just decided to leave. I mean, basically, it's, uh, that's what I'm saying. Basically, she could be they could make some excuse where she doesn't want to come back to that crazy world, so she doesn't, you know, never see her again. It'll be very interesting, but I like I like Harvey's speech. I'm trying to give him the high school football locker room speech. I know. I was like, are, are we going to get Commissioner Bullock before we get Commissioner Gordon? Oh my god, that'd be crazy. <laughs> uh, 
Well, was it earlier? Like, you don't work here anymore. <laughs> I know. It's like, Jim's not a are you still so. ha- Why are you still hanging around, Jim? <laughs> but this episode, just with everything with... Uh... Phil, let me ask you a question. Sure. If you had a secret underground layer, and, you know, people knew the name of it, and you relocated that, would you spray paint on the walls? Uh, no. But I'm like, why does it say Indian Hills real big on the walls? I'm like, come on. Man. Like, if that was a program that was shut down, and now you moved it to under Arkham, why did you put Indian Hills on the wall? Branding. It's like, well, it's like even in Marvel, why does Hydra put their their symbol on all their stuff? I'm just like, come on, think about it, man. Okay, do you think that was Killer Croc that we saw? Uh, maybe, but I maybe they can't name drop him because it's Suicide Squad movie. But it's, it's so weird with the Batman stuff, though, because yeah, of just how Batman exists on TV because it it exists like it's one of those because it's an older property mm-hmm. that what characters and stuff that they can use compared to uh, other things, you know. So I don't know because, but I do know we're supposed to get we have two episodes left and we're supposed to get Clayface. Yeah, because I even saw a picture. I was like, I thought it was supposed to be this episode, but that's why I kept when he when uh, Selena was walking around. Yeah, I kept expecting Clayface. I mean, we saw the new updated Firefly. But, oh, I love that outfit. That was awesome. I totally forgot who her friend was for a moment. She's like, uh-huh. my friend's there. I was like, who's her friend? And then I was like thinking, I'm like, who? And then I was like, oh yeah, Firefly. Yeah, because it's such a long stretch between breaks. You know, and like small character names, and they took that whole three month break, and we've even had like a week or two break since then too. It's just like, okay, it's like, come on, Gotham, I can't keep invested in your story when you make it really interesting, and then you leave me hanging for a long time. (sighs) But Azrael, man, like, do we learn nothing, Jim Gordon? You kept shooting him. Do we learn nothing? Like, shoot him in the face. He has no armor on the face. His helmet is off. Exactly, his helmet is off. Shoot him in the face. I mean, he comes to Wayne Manor, and I think the biggest shock for me in this episode was when he stabbed his sister. Uh, it was it was kind of shocking, but I kind of I figured they might do something like that because if he doesn't get out of this season, she's I don't I really didn't think they were gonna get she wasn't gonna get out of this season alive. Well, I mean, I completely agree, but it still kind of just was like, oh wow, that's. I wasn't sure if he'd do that. Yeah, but I, I think they were just... But she didn't that. die. She pulled a Barnes where she stabbed, but somehow he can stab people, but nobody dies. I don't know. Maybe she... I think she's dead. I just think they did that because they just wanted to show that he's so brainwashed and hypnotized and crazy that it's like, oh, he'll stab his own sister, so he'll, he'll kill anyone. He'll kill the children. He'll kill... Exactly. And that's probably like, got to stop Bruce, the last son of Gotham. And as real. Uh, I don't know. It was it was interesting. I like when they went to the crypt and they got the sword. Oh yeah, the real sword. Still no fire though, no flame sword. That was kind of uh insulting. And I thought it was interesting when Bruce and Alpha were walking through the house, like shut their doors and the windows. Really? Why not just go hide in the cave and be done with it? Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> It's a large house. Well, I think I think that was the plan, but it was too. But they did it too late because Alfred was like open in the fireplace. They were supposed to search the house and come back, and then go to the cave. Yeah, they're supposed to make sure. Look, if he's going to get in, he's going to get in. Okay, like he said, it's a big house. Just go hide in the cave because he's not going to find you in the cave. Yeah. So, I mean, it's a huge house that that everything only takes place in that one room. So. But you know, Alpha didn't make the like. I did like how Bruce snuck up on Alpha though. Yes. And he's talking to Jim. He's like, I don't know where he's at. And then he turns around, and there's Bruce. Very Batman like. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I mean, you see it coming. Like you see it coming, and that's what's awesome. Now, now Phil, what was your favorite part about this episode? Because you oh. had to text me as soon as it. You like, did you see it? So let's 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 just get to it. Let's enjoy. I- it. Let's, I'm it's sure. Very beautiful moment. 
I'm sure it was most people's favorite p- part, but I figured it would be yours because it's the ultimate, I think, the best cobble potting we've got in this, th- in oh, this series so far. This is the ultimate cobble pot. This is, I mean, I thought you couldn't up the ante from murdering two kids and feeding it to their mom. You know, I thought that was very cobble potted, as in being put in a pot and cooked. Uh, but no, this completely just, it was awesome. Like, it's... There are no words to describe how awesome this was. I mean, I, 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 when I told everyone, I didn't want to spoil it for everybody. So everyone I talked to was like, did you see the ending? And I'm like, and if not, I was like, you have to go see the ending. It's just, for those, <laughs> you should know if you're listening to this, but Penguin orders Butch to shoot Asriel with a rocket launcher. <laughs> <laughs> it reminded me of the ending of Kick-Ass when, when they shoot uh, uh, the one guy with the rocket Rocket launcher. Okay, like, they killed him with her. I'm yeah. going to say this. Uh, well, this past season of Walking Dead, they used the rocket launcher in the one episode. I haven't seen them all yet. I got to wait. Uh, they, they come out. Yeah. Um, but I was just like, like, come on. Like, that is amazing. He's like, I can't remember the line he said to Jim. He was like, you just brought the wrong gun or something and just <laughs> vaporized them. <laughs> <laughs> and he just walks off and Bruce, Alfred, and Jim are just standing there like, Okay, so Penguin's back. But I, um, I think it's, I mean, maybe because of the armor, did, did, was Azrael not actually shot because of his armor? Because I was going to say, if he actually did take a bullet, so is, does Strange have a process to make people immortal? I See, that's the thing, is he has that such that sick armor, uh-huh. and he's the only one that's come back so far that's interacted with everybody. Yeah. And that's why I kept saying, shoot him in the face, shoot him in the face. Yeah. Because it's not covered by the armor. But now, if he, he if he would have got shot, like I was thinking, because you're dealing with the brain and bringing people back, it was possible he could have been shot and then just kept going because he doesn't feel the pain. Yeah, or I was going to say, does he have like a healing factor now or something? So by completely eliminating him with a bazooka was the best course of action. Yeah, but so that's, that's what I'm saying. Does Does Hugo have a way to give his people healing factors now? We'll find out as more of them awaken. We know someone else is coming back that I'm not happy about. That if I could skip the episode, I would. Well, what, what, what do you, that's right. What do you smell, Tyler? What do you smell? I smell rotten fish. That's it's right. Just, it's just because her husband's dead shot. Oh, I think they wanted her back, but I, I, I'm just. Well, there's only two episodes left this season, so. Just to bring her back in the last two episodes, do you think maybe we're only, maybe she'll be gone by this season finale? You know, maybe they'll kill her off again in the season finale. I don't know if they'll kill her off or she'll just leave. Oh, maybe, maybe she'll maybe she'll be the first person in history to get cobble potted twice. <laughs> I don't know if she would love to go kill Carmine, but like she's gonna do her own thing. Yeah. yeah. I wonder if, like what kind of cliffhanger we're gonna get for this season. Something for you. So I don't know. Well, fish came back from the dead. Maybe, maybe that'll calm them down a little bit. Where's my parents' body? Take them to Strange. Seriously, I, I, I want that scene where Bruce has to like, where somebody has to talk him out of like, you know, trying to resurrect his parents. Yeah, I just don't. No really autopsy them buried. Everyone else who's died has kind of been their bodies could have been taken by Hugo. Yeah, but I mean, everyone like he brought back Theo, but Theo hasn't been dead that long. I mean, Bruce's parents right. have been dead. I mean, if it's since the beginning of season one, so yeah. The, the best murder, like the best Bruce reaction to the murder of the Waynes, but like the worst Wayne parents ever. Like, uh, I mean, I loved him, like in the scene and how he reacted. Like that was the best Bruce we've seen, but like just the parents in general, the actors. Everything was just so. Well, I guess I guess they they figured they didn't need the best actors in the world because it's like they're only going to be here for five minutes, you know. Yeah, just like if you ever watch, you know, Batman Begins, the actress that plays Martha has no dialogue. Yeah, she never speaks at all. Well, that's like even in the nineteen eighty nine Batman, we only see the murder in flashback and. Really, don't hear, we don't hear them say a word. All we, the only thing we see in them murdering the flashback is, "Come on, Jack, see you around." And of course, the you ever dance with the devil line. That's... 
but this episode of Gotham is worth watching, if nothing else, just to see Butch use a bazooka on Galavan. Oh yeah, that, 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 the minute we started this, I was like, oh, I got, I got to figure out a way to uh, not skip right to that part. I did like when Tabitha had the line about when the monks came and took him away, just kind of giving a little bit more about their past. Uh huh. You know, um, she's like, do you remember uh, summers and you know all this? And then she's like, before the monks came and took you away. And I was like, that that's interesting. Just you know, diving more into. Your- and uh, what they were beforehand. Any yeah, other cool Batman news going on, Phil? You're the Batman. What? Do we have any other Batman news going on? We got. I know, like we've been probably talking about, but Rebirth is coming up. What's comics. coming up? Rebirth. Oh yes, Rebirth. I can't. I can't wait. But like, just like what I was talking to Lilith today, I think. The character that needs the least amount of attention in Rebirth is probably Batman. Yeah, because, you know, one thing, you go back and read Snyder's Batman, uh-huh. it almost feels like it exists outside of everything else. Yeah, for the most part, yeah. I mean, it, you know, it, the events in Justice League never touch Batman. Because the whole time they did Forever Evil, Evil, we were in Zero Year in Batman. Uh-huh. Yeah. You know, even, uh, you know, I mean, of course it touches some of the other Bat books and things like that as well, but for the most part, the DC universe as a whole, Batman felt like it existed on its own. So when they do Rebirth, I'm kind of interested in what they're going to do. I mean, to me right now with Rebirth, the most interesting thing is going to be what? Superman. Uh-huh. Uh, and I'm going to talk about that more on Krypton Report because I'm going to review because right now I'm reading the whole final days of the Superman thing. Yes. So I just, that to me is like interesting and more merits the rebirthing brand than what they're going to do with Batman because I don't quite know what they're going to do with Batman. Well, did you see the preview for Detective Comics? Like to go back to the original numbering, but uh, th- did you see like the promo shot for the first issue with Detective? I guess after the birth. No, I, I saw the one for Action Comics, but I okay because because Detective and Action are both going back to they're picking up the numbering where they would have been if yes. they had numbered the New Fifty Two with the old numbering. Is that is that it, or I thought it was I thought they were just picking up where the where like the old numbering left off without counting new. I don't know. I'm pretty sure I mean, I'll, I'll look it up, but I'm pretty sure it's they're gonna pick up where. Uh, we'll figure it out, but yeah. Oh my god, and how big are they? In our lifetime, we're going to see issue 1,000 of Action and Detective if they keep go if they keep going with his numbering, so how big are those books going to be? <laughs> That's $30. I'm just buying one comic. Yes, yeah, exactly. but it's Action Comics number 1,000. That's right. And it's only it's actually, 20 pages. <laughs> it's Action Comics number 1,000. <laughs> but, uh, no, in Detective, it looked like uh, it looks like Batman and Batwoman are like basically training. Spoiler, and it looks like Tim Drake's in it, but it looks like Tim Drake's wearing like a regular Robin costume again. See, that's that's the thing is like when Batman became the New Fifty Two, uh-huh. it was one of those that the least changes. Yes, like it had retweaking, but they kept a lot of continuity beforehand. Oh, and yeah. I feel like I feel like with Batman Rebirth, it's going to be kind of in the same vein. But I'm gonna tweak some things here and there. Oh, they're yeah. gonna try to keep a lot in. Like I don't. I see how they're setting up Supergirl for Rebirth. Yeah. Uh, to a point, depending on how like the whole Rebirth issue do- goes. But Superman, so far to me, is gonna be the biggest change. Well, yeah, because there's like swapping out Supermans. They're bringing back the original one from before New Fifty Two. Yeah, like, I mean, I read the Convergence with him, and I'm like, is that how we're going to get him back? Is because of, you know, Convergence? Uh, I need to go back and brush up on what happened in Superman Convergence, because I haven't been reading the, the Lois and Clark Adventures. Oh, you have to read that. That is, like, the best Superman book out right now. Because I've been wanting the the trade paperback of it. Yeah. Just just because it's been so hard trying to keep up with all individual issues. Uh-huh. Um, so now I'm now I'm debating if I should go and hunt down the individual issues. Yeah. We'll wait for the trade. 
Uh, it depends how quickly they get to trade out. Like if they get it out by like rebirth or a little after, I, you might be able to wait. But it's it. Like I said, that is consistently like the best Superman book since it came out. So I have to look into that. I might pull that up on my quiz here. So, but yeah, I'm I'm excited for rebirth. It's, well, then, uh, yeah, but the other big Batman thing I cannot wait for is uh, the Killing Joke in July. Uh, are you going to – it is the first one that I'm really tempted to buy twice. Like, I'm really tempted to buy it digital when it comes out because I've already pre-ordered my DVD Blu-ray set because uh-huh. I love having them. Like, I love keeping and collecting them and having the multi-formats and stuff. But, man, like, I really – like, what is it? They're releasing it well, they, video they, they, on they, demand – Middle been, of July. Yeah, they've been doing digital and video on demand like at least a week or two early on all of them. But yeah, same here. Like I'll I'll get I like getting the Blu-rays, but I might buy both just so I can watch it early digital. You know, digitally because because we're gonna review it because I know it's Lil, joke. Yeah, Lil likes to do it for Channel Fifty Two, but somehow, some way, we are this summer we will have a special for it right here. So stay tuned. Because I know that Shania loved it. Like, she loved That was one of the first graphic novels when we got together uh-huh. that I got her to read. She read The Killing Joke because she loves The Joker. Uh-huh. And then she read Hush. Um, that it, It's it's one of those ones where if somebody says they've only read a handful of Batman stories, that's usually one of the ones they've read. And I think the Blu-ray release is the fifth. No, wait, the second. It's the same week that we get Suicide Squad. So that Tuesday we get the Killing Joke, and that right. Friday we get Suicide Squad. Huh. So I'm, like I said, I'm tempted to get it early to the digital release, but we'll see what happens. Because I'm, I'm excited too because they haven't said what's coming after that. Like they'll announce it at Comic Con. I know they will. That's right. what they did last year. But they haven't said. Um, I listened to an interview with a storyboard artist who worked on it, who works on the direct DVDs. And he's already, you know, four movies ahead with what they're working on. So we know they're doing more, but they haven't told us what titles they're doing yet. Well, they, they, they've they said they've worked on them before, but they keep putting it off and delaying and shutting down. But they need to do that Teen Titans Judas contract. That was how long ago was that one was supposed to be done? Oh, years ago, I think. Oh, yeah, because it was, it was before, I want to say before they decided to do Dark Knight Returns. Yeah. But I, I don't remember. But I, I just I know that I want to see a direct sequel to because I like they do the ones that tie together, like how like Son of Batman, Batman vs. Robin, yes, you know Justice League, Ju- War, Justice League, Thrones of Atlantis, Justice League versus Teen Titans. They all tie together. Mm-hmm. But then you but then you get like the Killing Joke and Gods and Monsters and Assault on Arkham that are different. Mm-hmm. And I like that a lot. I like the little mix up. So I'd like to see, I'm trying to remember off the top of my head what the extra post credit scene from Justice League Thrones of Atlantis was. It was something with the villains, I can't remember. So I'd like to see a sequel to that, and then I, some other I just, property. I just wonder if Rebirth has affected that at all, because by the time we got Justice League War, they kind of knew 52, the animated universe. Yeah, I mean, think about though how long, like... Just, Let's see, New 52 launched in 2011. Uh-huh. And by the time that we got uh, Flashpoint, it was late 2013. And Justice League War came out at the beginning of 2014. Mm-hmm. So, you know, that's two years. So, and it's not direct New 52, but it is pulled more from the New 52. So, what will we get? You know, having a rebirth uh, brought in. I don't know. It'll be interesting. Because I always, I always thought it'd be cool to do Flash Rebirth, but that that title's going to get so mixed up and confusing now. Yeah, but yeah. animated, yeah, we need more we need more Flash and, like, Arrow animated stuff, because, I mean, the TV shows are on, you know, strike while the interest is there. Exactly. Exactly. I mean, we, we, uh, like, I think Wonder Woman was one of the best direct-to-DVD movies they did, but it just came out at the wrong time. The, yeah, and they, and for, I don't know if I buy it, but they always say, oh, well, the best, you know, the, the stuff that sells the best is like the Batman stuff and then the Superman stuff. And that's because they push it so hard. 
Well, yeah. You know, and there's so much of it in the market and that people relate to it more. You know, now that like now is when you should have Wonder Woman because you're building up that brand. Oh. Uh, oh yeah, after Batman v Superman, yeah. That means I mean the interest in Wonder Woman's high, so we have Wonder Woman the movie. So I mean, you know, this is where you want to capitalize on that. That's why I'm surprised they never made a bigger flash only movie. Uh, I mean they did Flashpoint. But that was like, let's see, that has everybody involved in it. Um, so, you know, I, I thought first, Green Lantern first flight could have been better. To me, that was weak, but Wonder Woman's solid. Like, yeah, I, th- I think the problem with the Green Lantern one was, uh, I don't know if they were trying to stick close to the movie. Just so people had a, like a reference point. Yeah, I mean, because I, I mean, that came out like, let's see, if I remember right, that one came out around right before the movie. Yeah, and then Gotham Knights came out before the Dark Knight. It was after Batman Begins, but before the Dark Knight. Yeah. So I mean, they they, they were playing it, you know. I mean, Superman Unbound came out right after Man of Steel or right before Man of Steel. It was, it was in the same time frame, like a couple of months apart. Yeah. So I I think right right now would be the best time to maybe do take this new Fifty Two continuity animated continuity. And do a Wonder Woman film. Do it more the way they did Wonder Woman in the New 52. Mm-hmm. You know, being more with, like, the whole Greeks and Zeus and everything like that. Yeah. Because I would be completely on board with, you know, with them going that route. Because it's always, like, we always get a Batman film, a Superman, and a Justice League. Because, you know, Justice League has everybody. And, of course, Batman sells because it's Batman. But, you know, there's other characters that, like... You know, Attack on Arkham. First one I ever heard you review. It was a Suicide Squad movie, but they just put they just put Batman on it to sell it. Because if they just said Suicide Squad, no one would buy it. I mean, people would, but you know what I'm saying. Like, but I love all the direct to DVD films. I own them all. I'm just now. I I bought them all for the longest time in DVD form because it was just cheaper. But now I've begun buying all of them Mm Blu-ray. Because I'm like that. So, but, is that it? Have we talked it out? Yeah, I mean, we talked out God, and we're just talking Batman and now. Oh, okay. DC. I mean, there hasn't been, you know, the biggest Batman splash, like you said, is Killing Joke, but technically Suicide Squad, too, because Batman will be part of that, and we'll see. What? Killing Joke's first before Suicide Squad. Yep. So that's the next big Batman list. You know, and, uh, get something. When did you say? When did you say Batman v Superman's coming out on Blu-ray? July. July. So it'll be out like a month before Suicide Squad. Okay, so there'll be two Batman DVDs on the, in July. It's a good. It's a good year. <laughs> Lots of stuff. Oh, you want to? Okay, here's something. This is not Batman related, but Superman related. I saw. I didn't think about this. If you go back and watch the sh- the shots of Zod. When he stabs Jarrell, uh-huh. it is the same kind of st- shots that Doomsday does before he stabs Superman. Oh. Like, and I'm like, oh, wow. Like, someone set it up like a meme. So I'm kind of like, oh, that's really interesting. Huh. Just, so. But all right, Phil. Well, hey, that light shining in the sky, you better suit up and get to it. That's, um, all right, let's get out of here. Uh. <laughs> Share your share your thoughts with us on Gotham, on Killing Joe, on Suicide Squad, basically anything. Uh, email us before the bat at gmail.com. Facebook is before the bat. We've got the podcast. Twitter is at before the bat pod. And our shared Instagram is before the bat underscore flash arrow pod. And Tyler, where can people find you? They can find me pretty much anywhere at JTY Patrick uh, on Instagram, on Twitter. And on Facebook, you can also find me. I'm on the Krypton Report on the Southgate Media. My wife and I, Jania, discuss Supergirl and all things part of the Superman House of L family. So, so we've had that should be coming out soon where it's actually a video slideshow where we visited the Superman Museum in Metropolis. Um, so that, that's coming up cool. And that'll be on the Southgate YouTube. So people can check us out there. Awesome. And there's big things coming for the Krypton Report. There is. I won't give it away, but... 
All right, man. Well, you take care, and let's say the lines. Wait, I don't get to give it my social media. Uh, no, like, because everyone who listens to this knows you. They know yeah. if they listen to any podcast in Southgate, they know where to find Phil. That's true. That's true. <laughs> Everywhere. But go ahead and say it, just like every comic. This could be someone's first episode. That's right. Uh, if you want to talk anything DC or Marvel with me, email me nightwingpdp at gmail dot com, and on Twitter I'm at nightwingpdp. I'll leave it at there. I don't want to annoy Tyler. <laughs> <laughs> what if I want to talk Spawn with you? Fine, I read Spawn, guy. <laughs> if you want to talk Image Comics or Boom. Spawn and, Spawn and Walking Dead are the only two I would read that aren't Marvel or DC. So if you want to talk Spawn or uh, Walking Dead, you can email me. I'm actually reading Power Rangers because I really like Kyle Higgins' writing. Oh, yeah. Since his Nightwing run. But yeah. I stick to the big ones because I don't have enough money to buy everything I want. Exactly. But. All right. Well, let's get out of here then. Uh, same bat time, same bat channel. Same bat time, same bat channel. The Gotham Podcast. <laughs>